Ooh, I think it might have rained last night. Right, good morning all. Uh, hope you're all okay. Um, welcome to another of my videos. Uh, today I haven't got a huge amount of time left uh, on a Saturday morning, so I've just come out for a quick five mile walk. And uh, it's through the local area of Swindley Forest where, as you would imagine, with all kind of ancient forests, there's all kind of mysteries surrounding it, but these are more mysteries of an industrial age. And uh, so what we're coming to look at today is the, the mystery of an abandoned railway station, mystery of a railway cutting, a tramway and a brickworks. To be honest, it's one of these ones that I've been investigating for a long time, but I've never get round to actually coming out and doing it. So let's go and have a look. Um, although I've been threatening it for a couple of uh, weeks, they uh, I've actually today decided to put the gaiters on because as you just saw with that puddle which came through, we've had a lot of rain and it's a bit of a squelch fest today. So this area that we're walking through at the moment is called Swindley Forest, part of the Crown Estates. Uh, there are sections of this, I mean you look at all this kind of woodland and uh, you think wow, a lot of these fir trees are actually quite young. But as you get towards more that away, you're going to find some oaks which are about 300 400 years old and uh, the crown estates were so called because originally in the uh, kind of like elizabethan era or probably even the tudor era they were using these forests to harvest oak for shipbuilding but also the kings and queens used to come into this forest to hunt for deer as well. Is, uh, but nowadays, it's a favourite place for dog walkers. Of which you will see many in here. It would be an idyllic spot if it weren't for the fact that we're on the flight path from Heathrow. So every so often you'll find a uh, Boeing 747 heading across the forest on its way to America. But I suppose you can't have everything, even if you have a beautiful forest on your doorstep. Technically this section I'm walking at the moment is part of three castles. There's a particularly dangerous section of road because this bridge is effectively a single track bridge, quite ancient. That's a soil pipe, a bit of ornate brickwork. Exit of a soil pipe there. Fragments of a soil pipe at the back. Might have been a toilet. 
But what do you need a toilet out here for? Some more smashed up brickwork. There's something that was here, it's been demolished. Bit of fence to know where to go and a uh, little hut by the side of the railway. So I come up here to get a better vantage point. So over here where the as you see down that section of the track there there is quite a high banking uh, along the whole side of the track until you get to here where there's that kind of gate entrance there and then down here all the way down that side of the track there's quite a high bank of earth and we believe that to be demolition rubble because down here is what we believe to be the Ascot West Railway Station. So Ascot West was created in the uh, early part of the 20th century to serve Ascot Racecourse for all the posh people coming from London. So they wouldn't have to uh, get off at Ascot train station when they were coming to Royal Ascot. Uh, they would get off at Ascot West and then they'd have private limousines which would take them up and over the short journey to Ascot Racecourse. Um, but it was eventually closed because nobody was using it. Ascot West Station opened in 1922 and closed in 1965. In this screenshot of an OS map from 1945 you can see an unknown depot on the north side of the tracks which may have been a storage depot for the Royal Flying Corps which later became the Royal Air Force. To the south of the tracks on the curve is the Army main ammunition stalls. On the east side of King's Ride, just south of Ascot West Station, there was an area that had been used as the winter quarters for Bertram Mills Circus, which I'll explain about shortly. In 1940, this was converted into a camp for internees, subsequently becoming a prisoner of war camp from 1943 for captured Germans and Italians. After the war, Bertram Mills returned for 20 years until the circus performed for the final time in 1967. The tramway served the Swindley Brickworks to take bricks where there was demand. This operated from 1878 and was horse-powered. The Brickworks had a small rail track on site to take bricks to the station with a special road crossing. Bertram Mills was a famous and reputable showman who ran a tenting circus which travelled using the rail network and had winter quarters at Ascot West Railway Station. Between 1930 and 1964 and alongside his annual shows at Olympia, Bertram Mills Circus toured the country under the management of his sons Cyril and Bernard. Following the lines of excellence, production and performance standards set by his Olympia shows, according to Bertram Mills' philosophy that the Mills Circus will perform like professionals and live like gentlemen. His tenting show had the creme de la creme of circus performers and regional audiences thrilled to some of the leading artists of the day appearing in the specially designed German Big Top which travelled by rail and he was the first British showman to do so. Ascot West was also used by the Bertram Mills Circus as a terminus for their animals who would travel to their winter quarters at Englemere Farm in the early 1930s. Englemere Farm is now occupied as the Ascot Park Park Homes Estate. 
So this is looking back towards the Ascot Station south side. Sorry if there's a little bit of road noise next door to our road. Um, now I had assumed that there was no opposite station platform, but I may have been in error because I'm just looking down here as I was walking along. And you see here, this is sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss only grows on rock, generally, if it's vertically facing, that is. Um, and these are dressed stones. So they're, they're obviously edging a road of some sort, which goes up there and joins onto the main road so maybe there was maybe there was a, uh, a station down here anyhow the reason why we are uh, coming down here is because this was the site of an ancient pathway and they built roads straight down it uh, but we think it can access Crown Estates back into Swindley Forest again uh, at the end here Yay, Crown Estate. Right, Let's see if we can squeeze through here. Ooh. Yeah, look, it's a brickwork. Well, there's a clue. So down there is a trading estate and uh, Around about the 1940s that trading estate was actually part of the military works and was a prisoner of war camp for the uh, Italian prisoners of war. Um, however the reason why it was a military camp over in that kind of like posh estate I was showing you early, earlier is because there was a tramway which came out of that uh, out of the junction with the, the mainline railway and the, the tramway came round here and across this section of forest here and uh, it serviced the local Swindley brickworks which we're going to go and try and identify and take a look at now see if anything exists because it was kind of prevalent in the uh, 1890s or thereabouts so obviously it's long gone uh, but the area around the Swindley brickworks is uh, now dedicated as a triple SI because it's a, an important nesting site for rare marsh birds or something like that. Anyway, we're going to go and have a look. So according to the uh, ancient map that we're looking at, the, the ancient tramway that fed the brickworks uh, was actually quite close to the road. And uh, you might be able to see cars passing on that busy road out there which heads down to the A32 which goes 322 which goes bagshot. Now the other tool that I was using at my disposal is a uh, a lidar survey of this area and uh, it seemed to think that the uh, the old ancient tramway was actually quite easy to spot. Uh, because it was showing as a, a bump on the on the um, on the terrain, so let's go and have a look. I think I can see it from here. Yep, and there it is. Here we go up. There it is. 
there's um, a single track mineral railway apparently which uh, fed the uh, obviously went down and followed the down there across the road and uh, and obviously down to the mainline railway station So as the smaller pits were exhausted in the main area then they went into deeper pits of which there are many along this side of the road and then when these pits were exhausted then they actually went over the other side of the road and I think that there is evidence of them putting the tramway under the main road I think but when I was last there, on the other side of the road, they, uh, I didn't have a camera with me, so we'll go and have a look and see if there is evidence of that. TL is on that stamp on that brick. Part of the brick is missing. It should say TLB, which stands for Thomas Lawrence Bracknell, whose company began making bricks in the 1860s and by 1893 had works at Swindley, East Hampstead, Warfield and Pinewood, turning out 12 million bricks a year between them. During the previous year, bricks bearing the distinctive TLB mark had been used in over 300 towns in this country and abroad and were used by Madame Tussauds and Harrow College. So I've come to the other side of the road now and uh, you can see there's actually a distinct line down there. So this is where the tramway came through. I'm pretty sure now actually it just crossed the road rather than big funky pipe. Concrete though. Uh, yeah, I think it just crossed the road now. I don't think it tunnels because you look at the ground round here. They would have had to have a uh, a massive pumping engine going 24/7 just to keep it dry. So yeah, I think that just came across. So you know, what I was saying earlier about uh, how in the uh, one part of the forest are some gnarly old oak trees a couple of hundred years old well here they are so uh, obviously these aren't the only ones but these examples are probably only about 200 years old or something like that you'll see that uh, up here they've got yellow tags on them so they've got tree preservation orders slapped on them which means the people going out doing forestry operations can't cut them down hooray but this whole avenue coming up here is just lined with oak trees oh I don't know if you can see right up there in the canopy mistletoe huge clumps of mistletoe all all up there in the canopy of the oak trees so these things are a bit of a mystery there's loads of these in uh, in Swindley Forest um, they're about six foot deep maybe square brick lined doesn't appear to be uh, any side of pipe work going in or pipe work going out nobody has any idea what they are not a clue 
If, you, uh, if you've got any ideas, stick them in the comments below.